Okay. Um, so actually, earlier today, I, ma I made a mistake in, the, in, the, in, in my introduction speech. The, the first conference was in December 2013, and uh, David was already there. Um, and uh, so the, 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 this shows the, uh, the confidence of the people who uh, attend BotConf uh, over the years. And uh, actually, he did a presentation on a similar topic. Um, and um, the, this highlights one of the uh, one of the issues we are trying to address with BotConf. It's uh, uh, trying to look at uh, not only botnets but all malware ecosystems as a whole, uh, and not just at uh, malware that you analyze and from which you get uh, uh, technical information, but also about the people around them, the way they interact. Uh, you had some, some example uh, on the presentation before uh, relating to specific individuals and so on. Um, and uh, the, the work David and other people ha have been doing on uh, the ecosystem and the interactions is, is really important in understanding uh, how all this works and how we can better fight uh, against them. So uh, it's, it's really nice. Um, so they're going to talk about a specific forum uh, today, and um, so it's David uh, De Decari Etu and uh, Luca Brunoni. But they, they've been working with other people. They'll, they'll t tell you about it, and you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for for having us, and thank you to the speakers that intervened before us for their amazing presentation. Uh, so. Uh, I wanted to give you just a little bit of context uh, about this project because I think it is important. Um, this project is a collaboration between uh, a small uh, institute in Switzerland and, uh, and a bigger, let's say, reality in, in Canada, in, in, in Montreal. And um, so I represent the Swiss part, and I have to admit I am a bit of an outsider here. So I come from um, a town called Neuchâtel. Uh, a small town called Neuchâtel, in which there is uh, an also small institute, uh, very busy but small, that's called the uh, Institut Lutte contre la Criminalité Économique, so the Institute of the Fight Against Economic Crime. Now, this institute exists since the year 2000. And at the beginning, it was more focused on the, you know, the staples of economic crimes, like corruption, uh, money laundering, and, you know, this classic um, criminal phenomenon. But since I have started working there in 2014, I have noticed rapidly that our, our projects were mainly dealing with uh, crimes that had a, a digital or, or computer element. And that, of course, for someone like me who has a legal background, because my, my background is that, it's legal, required uh, maybe trying to understand a bit more also the technical side of some things. Which I have to say, uh, sadly, um, there is a bit of a gap. I come from the legal community, and maybe you have noticed the same in your experience. Sometimes there, there is really a gap between what legal people know, like from a technical point of view, and what you know, people that come from a computer science background know. But sometimes these people have to work together to, to make things happen to, in order to fight against economic crime. And so this is why I'm so excited to be here, because for me it's, it's a real opportunity uh, you know, to, to delve into some, some stuff that for me is more complex and to, and to learn new things. So again, uh, this collaboration that we have with, with David and the University of Montreal, for us is about bridging the gap. It's about creating projects in which I can bring my, my expertise, but you know, I cannot do anything on my own, especially because I lack the technical background, and so to, to have the help of people who have the technical background. And I think those synergies are very important moving forward. So to introduce the project, uh, I want to tell you that our institute has been busy in the last years trying to meet the criminals in their own playground, okay? So we have been trying to observe criminal behavior as they happen in real time. And one of the biggest, biggest projects that we, that we have is a project on scam, uh, scam baiting of uh, uh, fraudsters that perpetrate romance scam. Now, a romance scam, obviously, is the, the classic MO is creating a fake account, being present on a platform such as, for example, Tinder, and, you know, 
acting as if the, the scammer is falling in love and then asking for money. And so we have been present on those platforms, interacting and observing criminal behavior, collecting data, collecting intel, collecting information such as EBANs, in order to, to uh, frustrate also the, the, the criminal activity and learn more about it. Now, as you can see, this is something that we can do with our own uh, background and with our own skills, because it's, it's, it's still the, the, the human interaction. And another project that we have uh, that is the one that we are going to talk about today, it's also about analyzing criminal behavior in a certain context, and in this case it's about analyzing uh, the behavior on, on, on forums, on internet forums, in which uh, hackers and, and people that uh, perpetrate cybercrime interact with each other. And so for this project, we couldn't do it, of course, on our own, and this is why we established a, a connection with the University of Montreal, and David, who is here with me today, and we started looking at, uh, um, at forums. Now forums, of course, we know them also in other fields in economic crime as platforms of information sharing. So people who are likely minded, criminally minded, they meet on those forums, they ask questions, they share tutorials, they share information, and basically they, they, they communicate. Now, those forums have also another side as sometimes they function as, as a meeting point that can then lead to transactions. Now, the transaction obviously don't happen on the forum themselves, but uh, they are displaced on, on communication services such as Telegram, for example. But so this double side of, of, of the forums creates a, a, a good observation uh, zone for us because we can monitor, we can see the interactions. Uh, there are, of course, countless forums uh, in the criminal underground and also countless forums where discussions about malware and also transactions about malware are taking place. Some of those forums are public, which means that you know, anyone can access them. In some other cases, the access is restricted. Now, that, of course, can keep out us, you know, researchers, also can keep out uh, law enforcement authorities or other authorities, and also can create, let's say, a more safe and professional, maybe, environment in which people who are more skilled can communicate or they can communicate in a more secure way. Or at least, this is what we thought. And um, so we also wanted to, to check if this like myth of the elite private forum was something that uh, was real. If we could, by analyzing private and public forum, if we could oh, put our hands on some data that could prove that this difference uh, existed. And so, to start doing that, and I, I come again to the importance of working together and of synergies, we couldn't do it on our own, and this is where David comes into play with his experience first in helping us gaining access to those forums and then gathering the data set that uh, has allowed us to, to obtain the results that we will present today. Yeah, so, so basically the, the goal of the project was really to understand the differences between the public forums, which can be easily accessed by anyone online, and the forums which are a bit more private and more restricted. And there's been very scant research on these more private forums that has been published so far. Um, here you have a paper by a colleague of mine in Montreal who did research on dark code, um, which was known as one of these forums that wanted to be a bit more private. And what was really interesting is when he looked at the data uh, of all the people that applied, actually 95% of the people who applied to dark code were actually accepted. So I don't know if any of you guys tried to get in, but it was apparently extremely easy to get into this forum, even though they kind of put up this dialogue in this wall saying, you know, you need to be part of the community and you need to be invited or you need to prove that you belong to this community to go into this forum. And so um, we wanted to look at this topic and to try and better understand kind of what are the differences in the activities that are advertised on these markets. 
And um, so this is extremely an exploratory research project. So uh, in, we can't really generalize to all of the forums, of course, what we, what we studied in here. But basically, we just took two forums. One of them was uh, on the private side, um, and it was a bit bigger than the other one. And our goal was to look on these forums for their marketplace section. So in these marketplace sections, you're going to find all the advertisements for all these services and hacking, um, hacking malware. And we focused really on the malware side of things and to look at what malware was advertised on these forums. And we look at all the trends that were started between June 1st, 2020 and February 10, 2021. And basically, we selected all the trends where we could find information about malware. And so in the end, we came up with about 86 malware from the public forum and about 136 malware which came from the private forum. And we got all the information that we could either from the posts in those threads or from open source research on the internet, trying to gather as much information as we could about these malware. And so in these next slides, what I'm gonna present is kind of our analysis of these malware, what was for sale, and our goal, once again, is really to compare kind of these two sides. So um, malware is a very broad and generic term, so extremely difficult to kind of summarize everything that's going on with malware. Um, one thing that we tried to do is to look at what was kind of the, the, the point of these malware. So one way to look at it is to look, well, is this malware looking to access, to provide access to a machine, or is it main goal is to exfiltrate information and exfiltrate data from, these, uh, from their uh, victims? And so in this case, it was really interesting, first of all, to see that there's not much differences between the two of them. Um, so basically, it's almost half, uh, split halfway in both cases. Um, in the case of private forum, when we tried to understand kind of what this malware was doing, it was a bit more difficult sometimes because we didn't have as much information just because maybe the malware was a bit more private or secret um, or there was less research by you guys that were made on it. But basically, it was kind of split kind of, you know, in the middle. Um, when we look at the first class, which was kind of providing access to a machine, uh, we could further divide it into kind of two very broad categories once again. Um, either the malware that would give you access to the machine so you could kind of manually log in, uh, do whatever you wanted with it, maybe pivot to other systems, or if it was mainly targeted at just, you know, uh, providing you access with a bot on the machine. And here we did see some differences, some larger differences, and we saw that, for example, when it was more custom so that you could actually access the machine, log in, and control it to pivot to other machines or do other stuff. The private forum was actually um, uh, offering more options in that case than the public forum. And this isn't surprising because if you want to be doing something manual, it's probably going to be more of an elite or sophisticated class of actors, basically. When we look at the data exfiltration part of it, so this was kind of the second class of malware. Um, here we decided we tried to once again kind of cut it up in different categories. Um, we see that there's a lot more uh, differences here than what we saw before. One of the big difference here is on the private forums, we saw advertised some sniffer malware, so sn malware that was looking at analyzing the network data, something that we didn't really see in the public forum. And also we saw a small share of the malware that was looking you know, at video recorders, so malware that, would just, that was aimed mainly at just recording you know, their target's videos. Um, and for the rest of it, the categories were quite similar basically in terms of the uh, data exfiltration. When we look at the target infrastructure, we were actually expecting to see more and more malware that was targeting uh, mobile phones. That's not something that we saw that wasn't all too common. Uh, we did see that it was twice as more common on the private than on the public forum. And so once again, um, this is maybe something that's newer, something that's uh, maybe a bit more sophisticated. And so once again, it was kind of in line with our research and looking at the private forums. Now, the next two slides to me are the most too interesting. Um, so the first thing that we wanted to like it was, well, when was this malware published that was being sold on these forums? And what we figured out, or what we thought initially, was that we would have maybe this malware that would be sold first of all on these private forums, and then after a while it would kind of dribble down to these public forums. And so we were expecting to see a lot of new malware on these private forums and see older malware on the public ones. 
And this, is, this was kind of surprising to see that actually it was a lot of new malware that was just popping up on these public forum compared to the private ones. And of course, we didn't really find very old malware for sale on these private forums, but we did see a mix of, uh, of these um, new uh, malware on the uh, public and the private forums. The other thing that was really interesting was looking at the price comparison. So one of the big questions that we had was, how do you quantify the quality of the malware that is being uh, offered for sale? And there's a million different ways that you can go about it, and I would be really interested if you have another way of kind of quantifying uh, how efficient or how good a malware can be. One way of doing it is looking at the price, basically. So we all know, like, there's this famous paper that sells, nobody sells gold for the price of silver. Well, we would expect that more sophisticated malware would actually be sold for a higher price. And so we looked at all the prices that we could find for these malwares on the forum, and basically what we found was that there wasn't that much of a difference between the two of them. On the public forum, there was a lot of cases where actually there was just no price advertised, so we couldn't really figure out what was the price of it. But basically what we saw was that most malware was advertised in the hundreds or the thousands of dollars. A few of them were actually uh, being sold for profit sharing or for uh, higher money. But basically, it was all kind of similar uh, again in this case. Finally, the last thing we looked at was kind of the profile of the vendors and trying to see, so did people establish themselves on these forums? And what we saw was that when we're looking at the reputation skills on the forums, mo in most cases on the public forum, people did really didn't invest in their profiles, invest in their reputation, and most of that happened actually on the private forum where people actually established themselves. And so, kind of looking at this, we were kind of surprised by the results, and um, the first thing that we actually found was that, you know, there was few differences actually in terms of the price of the malware that was being advertised, uh, how fresh this malware was, and this was kind of surprising because we were expecting to, to find a lot more differences in there. And so, the model that we kind of had guessed at, which everything would flow from the private to the public forums, uh, maybe wasn't kind of seen in our analysis. And once again, this is very exploratory, so there will be more work to be done in this field. But basically, that was already something that was kind of interesting to see kind of the, the lack of differences between the two of them. One thing that we see was that, uh, on the private forum at least, people seem to invest more in their profiles, in their reputation, in building these relationships. And this is something that's extremely important in any field. It can be you know, professional, computer science, professor, or whatever uh, field. It is extremely important to have to establish your career. And this will change kind of the social networks and who you can transact with. But in this case, kind of the, on the public forums, it seemed to be more fleeting, and people seem less interested in establishing their, uh, their reputation. Um, one difference, but of course, uh, it was kind of interesting. We, we all know that uh, you know, people usually from Russia are going to say that uh, you shouldn't attack uh, resources in Russia. And that's something that we saw in the private forum. But in the end, what was really interesting was that people actually had the choice in many cases to advertise on public and private forums. And people just decided that they were still going to go on public forum to advertise products that were actually very similar to what we find on the private forums. And so that was kind of very interesting, and it kind of talks about, and this is more kind of my criminology side, uh, but it really talks about kind of the high sense of impunity that you know, these threat actors can have, and to just believe that you can advertise pretty much anything, and basically you can get away with it. And we had some examples of sinkholing just before, and people getting arrested, uh, but in many cases it just shows that there's still this high sense of impunity among the community uh, of these uh, malware vendors. And so to conclude, um, basically, uh, we do need more validation for the differences because this was just you know, one versus one, and so this is a very limited kind of uh, study. Um, there are a lot of ethical considerations to consider, and this kind of explains why there's been so few research being done on this, especially when you get into forums where you want to be invited by the members. Uh, you need to build up your persona online. It becomes extremely touchy, and the, the ethical boards usually don't want you to lie to people. And so this has been kind of a challenge to establish ourselves and to, to be invited into these forums. That's something that needs to be done, however. And then the question becomes, well, what is the role of these forums and how important are they really? And this is where kind of the question of, you know, is going private really the best models for these, you know, malware uh, vendors? 
Basically, if you're on a very small platform, of course, you're going to have very few potential customers. And if you have very few potential customers, it means you're not going to be making as many sales as you would like, perhaps. And so this is an example uh, where you know, the private forums may just be too exclusive, and people may actually be willing to trade off some of their security to be more efficient and to be making more profits, because the private forums are just too private and too exclusive. Now, at the same time, uh, the question is also, well, you know, are people just interested by these private forums and have they moved on to other networks? So we know there's, you know, countless Telegram channels. We know there's countless associations and personal relationships. And that's something that I've seen in, in other criminal communities where basically, you know, when you go to forums, they may not just provide you with the anonymity that you want. And if you want to have higher level uh, malware, maybe you're going to go somewhere else and on these private forums who are just, even though they are more private, they're not private enough. So that's it for us. Thank you for listening. And if you have any suggestions on how to take this project forward, I'd be glad to uh, hear about it. Thank you. Thank you. So do I have my slave with a mic? <laughs> OK, I'll be doing it for starting. So who, ha who has a question? Yes. You're next, I guess. Thanks, Eric. Hi, uh, Chris. Uh, thanks very much for a good presentation. Um, just one question for me. With a sort of takedown of raid forums, do you see that have an effect and maybe moved more towards private forums? Thanks. Very good question. So um, we've seen countless forums take down. So I think this is pretty much baked into the community and people expect these forums to be dying every single week. Uh, and that's why maybe people did not invest as much in their online persona on the public forums because they know they're going to be more exposed and more likely to be taken down. Um, and even when you're looking at grid forums, I mean, the scene recovered pretty quickly. People have moved to crack another forum. And so people are kind of used to it, even though it's kind of, a, it adds a bit of friction. Um, I think that the model for private forum is good, but there's also a very big use to have these vast pools of people. And one of the things that I've always found really interesting is for people who, who read Brian Krebs, for example, he's going to be talking about threat actors, and very often he'll be talking about threat actors you would not expect to find on hack forums, which is you know, often seen as like a, a kiddie scene. But everyone has an account on hack forums, and I'm sure if I ask over here, at least a few people have multiple accounts, I'm sure, on hack forums. So basically, these public forums also serve a purpose, and I don't see them dying anytime soon. Hi, my name is uh, Simon. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, one question I had was whether you uh, took a look uh, or plan to take a look at uh, over services because you're focused on malware, but maybe some other things such as bulletproof hosting or um, selling a compromised accounts somewhere. Uh, well, did you plan to take a look at that? Yeah. So. Thank you for the question. Um, yes, and then there are so many things to sell on the criminal underground. Um, we tried to remain as focused as we could, and even looking at malware, like it was such a simplification of what malware is, is what we did, and I, we fully recognize that. Um, but it would be extremely interesting to look at other types, you know, the stolen accounts, for example, and to see where these accounts are being bought from and how important is the, the context for it. You know, with Genesis that we see popping up in the Russian market as well, um, they would be very fruitful to look at um, as soon as we hire 10 more people to, to work on this project. Yeah, I have to say remaining focus was really important. There was also a sort of entertainment value on reading all these exchanges on the, on the forums and discovering the depth of what was being, what was being offered. At least for me, it was like newer to the scene. It was like, oh, okay, so this is happening. So, yeah. Over there. Yeah, hello. My name is Gary. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I have two questions. Yep. The first one, uh, are you in contact with law enforcement so that when a forum, uh, uh, when there is a takedown, so that you have the chance to maybe get a, an image of the server so that you have more data for, for analysis? And the second question, 
do you inform, let's say, companies when, when you see access credentials in, in, in the forum hmm. or access is, is um, sold? So I don't want to insult any law enforcement in the room, um, but uh, over the past few years, I must say, at least on my end, I've given more than I've received from law enforcement. Uh, you want to get arrested? Huh? You want to get arrested? <laughs> You know, sometimes I think I know enough law enforcement that they could gather anything, but yeah, that still remains to be seen. Um, but in terms of images, I mean, I've been promised many images over time. Um, at least with academics, it's, I found it pretty difficult to receive anything. To, so it's more of a one-way street, but I'm really hoping that will change in the future. Um, and in terms of uh, sending in information, um, once again, I think as academics, we kind of stand in the middle between everyone. And basically, our goal is more to inform. Um, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you know, any law enforcement has or offender have. We, the goal is kind of to present this is the reality, and this is what we found. And then you guys use it as best as you can. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we have been. Um in communication with law enforcement on our institute side, like not only on, on cybercrime, but in general. And I have to say, in the, in, the, in the last year, this communication, as we get to know each other better, has, has become really more, more profitable. And I, I think that the boundaries are, are clearly set on what is our objective and, uh, and what is their objectives. But, but I think this, this, this line of communication, the more we communicate, the, the, the better we can establish connections and exchange data also obviously within what we can do and what they can do on their end. Hey, thank you for the talk, guys. Vitaly Kamlik Kaspersky. A uh, question, like, can you share maybe some tips or advice to the researchers in the audience? Like, what's the best way to infiltrate such forums and also to do the automatic um, information gathering, like crawling? Any advice on that? Um, so infiltration, uh, at least as academics, we are very limited, unfortunately, as to what we can do. Um, I actually just got my first ever permission to lie to people to do research, so that's kind of quite exciting. Uh, we'll see how that goes and if I get arrested at some point. Um, but, but basically, so we, we are limited to just saying not much or buying access, so that seems to be fine. So we get actually paid to have access, and that's kind of what we did for, for this forum over here. Um, and, and so in terms of infiltration, I think in the private sector, there's a lot more that you can do to create your fake profiles and to do your research. And I think this is where it comes becomes very valuable because it's kind of a different approach. Um, and then the second part of your question was about crawling or indexing the content. Um, I mean, the, the, the problem is always what your goal is. If you want to scrape data from one forum one time, extremely easy. I mean, that's 1994 technology. If you want to do it consistently every week on large marketplaces, this is where it becomes extremely uh, painful and difficult. And I've built my own kind of infrastructure and data collection technology. Um, and more and more, I think that it's a low added value uh, procedure. And it's better to, let, to give that to professionals who only do that. And then we can take this data and add the value to it. And I think that's kind of where the future is. And I love collecting all of my data. But if it doesn't leave you any time to analyze it, then what's the point of having these terabytes of data? And so more and more, I think, kind of moving forward, we're going to go to a field where we have companies whose only goal is to siphon off this data, and then we can actually give meaning to it and then do interesting stuff with it. OK, last question on this side. You're in between us and the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll not take much time. Uh, yeah, um, a nice presentation. Uh, I have a question. It's, uh, uh, do you have done any study, or are you doing any study where, which is like uh, tar targeting a particular industry, the malware or the forums are active? Um, no. So in this case, it was. You know, we 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 don't. So we have a paper that I can share around to people who are interested with more definitions of what is what. Uh, but in this case, we wanted to be as broad as possible. So you know, any malware. Uh, product that was for sale, but it was really a broad definition of what malware is, uh, just to be as inclusive as possible. And once again, there was thousands and thousands of threads and messages that we had to read. 
And then we ended up with a sample of about 220 malware that were for sale. So it was a lot of work for, in the end, not that many malware. And this is where kind of the problem of the scale is we have to do all of this manually. And this is quite complicated, um, doing, especially doing all the open source research, try and understand, for example, what is the price of malware? When was it first launched? You need to spend quite some time on this. Um, and so this is why, uh, yeah, we are a bit limited. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Merci.